Welcome to our worship on this Trinity Sunday. It's great that we are able to join together, even although we are apart. Uh, we are, of course, always united in the love of God as we worship him uh, in our homes. Um, if you've already said in the comments, uh, good morning to everyone to let uh, them know you're here. That's great. Um, but if you'd like to do that, it's a real encouragement to me and to everyone else to see your comments. Um, I can't respond to them during the service, but I will look at them for afterwards for sure. Um, I posted the liturgy on the website earlier on in the week, or it's been emailed out to you. Uh, please feel free to join in with as much as you like, or simply allow the words to speak to you. So today, Trinity Sunday, it's uh, the Sunday when the wise preacher tries to do everything they can to avoid preaching heresy, and the wisest preacher invites somebody else to do it for them. And so I'm very pleased to say that uh, Rogelio will be uh, speaking to us later in the service on today's Gospel reading. But we begin our worship by singing together a hymn, Firmly, I Believe and Truly. to pause together before we begin with the greeting. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. The word of the eternal Father created us. The love of the gracious Son redeemed us. The presence of the Holy Spirit unites and empowers us. Come and worship the glorious Trinity, our God of power, love and peace. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. 
Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the honour due to his name. The whole earth is full of his glory. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And as we hear those words from Isaiah 6 in the story, Isaiah was immediately aware, surrounded by the holiness of God. He was aware of his own sinful nature. But we have a God who is willing to forgive us when we bring our confession to him. How often have I longed to gather your children as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, says the Lord, but you would not come to me. So let us, as wayward children, return to God and confess our sin. We pray together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us for all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Prayer for Trinity Sunday Holy God, faithful and unchanging, enlarge our minds with the knowledge of your truth and draw us more deeply into the mystery of your love, that we may truly worship you Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We're going to get our reading now from Richard Wilcox and this will be followed by Rogelio's reflection on it. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely... I am with you always, to the very end of the age. In the 19th century, a stone plaque was discovered in the ancient city of Praini, in Asia Minor, what nowadays is Turkey, and it read as follows. The providence which rules over all has filled this man with such gifts for the salvation of the world as to designate him the saviour for us and for the coming generations. Of wars will he make an end and establish all things worthily. By his appearing are the hopes of our forefathers fulfilled. Not only has he surpassed the good deeds of men of earlier times, but it is impossible that one greater than he can ever appear. 
the birthday of God has brought to the world the gospel that is bound up in him. From his nativity a new era begins. Who is it? What is it about? Well, it's about Julius Caesar, of course. It's about the beginning of the new Julian calendar that was going to be used in the Roman Empire and that would start from the day of the birth or the nativity of Julius Caesar. The plaque is actually dated to the year 9 before Christ. It is fascinating to see how much of the Roman terminology used about the Emperor is taken over in the New Testament and used about Jesus. In the Roman Empire, heralds were sent to cities to proclaim, that word proclaim is translated more often than not in the New Testament as preach, so imperial heralds were sent to the cities to preach to the local assembly, the same word as church, the gospel or good news of the coming of our Lord and Son of God, the Emperor or to preach the gospel of his victories in battle, which was the way the emperor established the Pax Romana, the Roman peace imposed by force in most of the known world. The imperial power of Pilate, supported by the political power of Herod and at the request of the religious authorities, sent Jesus to be tortured to death on a cross, ostensibly in order to keep the peace among the people. After his resurrection, having defeated all the powers and death itself, Jesus gives his followers his peace, which is not like the peace our world gives, he tells them. In our Gospel reading for today, Jesus, having defeated death, comes to his followers who fall at his feet, though not completely sure about what's going on. Jesus tells them that he has been given total and final authority over heaven and earth, that is, over the whole universe. Therefore, he says, on that basis, go and make all the peoples and nations my followers, teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. That is the very highest standard by which all international, national and religious authorities and peoples are finally going to be judged by. That is our standard for discernment. Not all will acknowledge that final authority of Jesus. Those who acknowledge it are to be baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Baptism is identification with the death and resurrection of Jesus. It is a public commitment to following him whatever the cost, it is taking the side of the crucified over against the side of the crucifiers. Right at the beginning of the Bible we find God creating order out of chaos through the power of his word and by the work of his spirit. The risen Jesus, the word of God incarnate, is the beginning of a new, a renewed creation. His followers now can address the transcendent Creator God as Abba, Dad. That is possible through our identification in the true Son of God and through the inward work of the Spirit in our lives and in the life of the Church. In the midst of the human chaos of our world today, 
God is at work in us and in our world with the power of the Spirit of the risen Jesus who says to us, Look, I am with you all the days till the end of time. He is with you today. So we affirm together our faith in the triune God. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Keenan and Lucy from St Michael's have put together our prayers for today. Merciful Father, make us strong in faith and love. Dear God, this week we pray that as lockdown restrictions are eased and as life returns to normal, that there is no increase in the COVID infection rates. We also ask that you guide our leaders in the parochial church council meeting this week. Give them wisdom to make the right decisions. Lord, we pray for those that are unwell in any way for those who are sick or feeling anxious or who are isolated and are in desperate need of your loving mercy. Please be with them. Please also be with those who care for them in any way, whether they are doing so up close or from a distance. Lord, we thank you for our key workers and we pray this week for our retail staff, especially those who are preparing to reopen shops and businesses and who may be worried about doing so. Glorious Son, make us strong in faith and love. Dear Christ, this week we pray for our Burma link and for the work of the St Andrew's Orphanage. Please bless and look after all who work and live there. We give thanks to you for the recovery of those who have been ill and pray for all who are in need of your precious healing, comfort and peace. We pray for Kelly, Kevin, Baby Lucy, Tom, Roger Glanville, Beryl Hickman, Rogelio Prieto, John Shakespeare, Vicky Stevens, Christopher Stotesbury, and Yvonne Toomer. Great and merciful God, we thank you for the life of Trisha Upton, and we pray for her family and friends as they mourn. Thank you, God. Thank you for all that you give us. Thank you for your kindness and your self-sacrificing love and your promise to make us whole with you someday. Please, in this week and forever, lead us into communion with you and by your Holy Spirit, bless all of creation. Holy Trinity, make us strong in faith and love. Amen. So we continue in a kind of prayer as we come to share God's peace one with another and uh, please feel free to type in the comments box but more importantly to pray for those that you might normally be sharing a handshake with, um, though especially those that you feel that you're really missing this morning. Peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father. Peace from his Son, Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the triune God be always with you.
Let's pray. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, give us the bread of everlasting life and make us branches of the true vine. Amen. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord. All that you reveal of your glory, the same we believe of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, without any difference or inequality. We, your Holy Church, acclaim you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide, Three persons we adore, one in being and equal in majesty. And so with angels and archangels, with cherubim and seraphim, we sing forever of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Granted by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming and glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, 
we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's pray. Almighty and eternal God, you have revealed yourself as Father, Son and Holy Spirit and live and reign in the perfect unity of love. Hold us firm in this faith that we may know you in all your ways and evermore rejoice in your eternal glory who are three persons yet one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, just before we go, some notices. Um, I'd just really like to thank you for all your messages. Please keep them coming. Do you know, I get lots of really boring emails and so it's lovely to get an email from one of you. Um, I really do miss you and I can't wait to see you again. But in the meantime, uh, feel free to drop me a line. I'm never too busy to read them. It'd be lovely to hear from you. 
Um, next Sunday, I'm actually on holiday, so I'm going to be leaving you in Norman's caring and capable hands. I begin my holiday on Friday, and that will be for a week. Um, it won't surprise you to learn that we're not going anywhere exotic. Uh, morning prayer and night prayer continue at 9 and 9, Monday to Friday. And uh, just from the pew sheet, a couple of notices uh, for you. Uh, any designers out there who would like to design a header for our YouTube or Facebook pages, um, please do uh, get in touch. Um, and we still need some more YouTube subscribers. We're still not quite at 100. So if you haven't done that yet, please uh, would you uh, look at doing that. And uh, just a couple of interesting webinars from the diocese uh, coming up. Check out the, the ones in the news sheet. The first one is a Wednesday coming, the 10th of June at 12 o'clock. Um, and it's about uh, growing authentic disciples. And it's really asking the question of what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church at this time. And so uh, Peter Rauch, our Archdeacon, will be leading that webinar. It looks really interesting. So uh, all are welcome to join in. Uh, today at four o'clock, there will be St. Nick's at four over on the St. Nick's North Stone and Facebook page. All are very welcome to join in with that. So all that remains is for me to wish you God's blessing um, and hope that you have a good day. So let's go with God's blessing. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.